Welcome back to the Snowpoint cast. Uh, today we're going to be going over a deck from 2010 called Dialga Chomp. Uh, Dialga Chomp got top 16, a guy, na guy named Wee Ye Chun from Malaysia. Uh, top 16 to the World Championships with this deck. His list was a little different, he played Drift Blim and some different counts, uh, but the, the same essential deck, so let's get right into it. So, starting off with two Dialga G. Uh, Dialga G's got 100 HP, uh, two retreat, a weakness to fire, and a resistance to psychic. So the resistance to psychic is actually pretty hot. Um, the fact that uh, Gengar and Gardevoir hit you for 20 less can can be a big deal. Um, so yeah, you got two attacks on the Dialga. The first one's called Deafen. So for a metal and a colorless, it does 10, and then your opponent can't play trainer cards from their hand during their next turn. So that's really solid. Um, I mean, you get it for a special metal and an energy gain. So not only are you taking that minus 10, so you're really tanky while you're trainer locking, but also um, you hit it for one. So a single energy attachment to trainer lock is pretty good for sure, especially in the early game. Um, and then the second attack you have is called Second Strike. So Second Strike does 50, uh, and if there's at least 20 damage on the opponent's active, then you do 20 more. Uh, and so for a Metal DCE, you do play DC in the deck, so you can just get a straight Metal DCE attach, um, or you can get it for two Metals and an Energy Gain. But yeah, Second Strike is really solid, and a lot of the times you like combo Deafen into Second Strike. You go like Deafen for a turn or two, um, and then Second Strike. Sometimes you need to hit it like right away. Like sometimes you Deafen once, and then drop a Crobat, and then Second Strike, and that's like a really aggressive turn one into a tune turn two like being able to set up get your trainers lock your opponent's trainers and then being able to hit them for um like put 90 damage on their active turn two is like a lot of pressure so that would, that would be super good um then you play two dial g level x so Dialga G level X got 120 HP, two retreat as well, uh, resistance and weakness are the same. Uh, so it's got a Poke body that's really strong. It's called Time Crystal. Uh, Time Crystal prevents all Poke bodies in play um, from being activated other than Pokemon SP Poke bodies. Um, so you keep Time Crystal and you keep any Poke bodies on your Pokemon SP, um, but you shut off stuff like uh, Nidoqueen. Uh, Nidoqueen that has Maternal Comfort. It's a body that's really good, heals between turns. You shut that off. Um, you shut off Dawn Fans, Exoskeleton, and that can be a big deal because uh, like getting hit for 60 twice means you're one shot uh, and like be them having exoskeleton and 120 HP means that like you're on pretty equal footing with a Don fan um, and like so you have to kind of race to take one another out and so being able to get rid of that exoskeleton can definitely be a big deal when you're trying to two shot them uh, what else could it do it's really good for um, oh yeah spear tomb so spear tomb is a really staple uh, setup uh, Pokemon. So uh, Spiritomb has a free attack that lets you like set up your Pokemon, but it has a body that locks trainers. So while you're deafening, you really don't want to be trainer locked yourself because the deck plays so many good trainers. Um, and getting trainer locked yourself can be really bad, depending on what the board situation is. So just being able to shut off Keystone Steel with a level X is really nice. And this list plays a 2-2 just so you can consistently find that Dialga. Um, like most of the ways you can search it in the deck are like trainers, like communication or um, SP radar. You play like two babies as well, but just having that two lets you raw draw into it consistently pretty pretty decently as well. So it's got an attack as well. The attack is not as good as second strike, but it's definitely got its situations. It's pretty hefty. Um, so for two metal, two colors, it's called remove loss. You do 80 and then you flip a coin until you get tails. And for each heads you get, you remove uh, an energy from your opponent's active and loss on it. So it can be really good if you, you know, hit a bunch of heads and your opponent has energy on their active. But uh, honestly, a lot of the time you would rather be deafening or second striking for the knockout uh, but there is there is times where lost remove is good as well so you play two dialga c um dialga c's got 80 hp single retreat uh, weakness to normal which is like dragon type it's got two attacks uh claw swipe for 30 uh, so you could you play dce so you can get this but you can also get it for uh, regular energy and an energy gain so it's just like good early game pressure if that's what you start and then the second attack uh, is called earthquake uh for three colors 50 and then you do 10 to each of your own pokemon and it seems kind of bad, you know, doing 10 to your entire board. Um, other than the Garchomp, it's just your bench Pokemon. But, like, doing 10 to your whole board is uh, not great. But with Healing Breath, that's actually not that big of a deal. And Earthquake is actually a really nice attack because it lets you uh, take out an opposing Garchomp. Like, if you get a DCE, an Energy Gain, and a Crobat drop, you're doing 110, which kills opposing Garchomp. So that's a kind of a cool part about that Garchomp. That's uh, important to know if you're in the SP mirror. So you play two uh, Garchomp c level x uh so it's got free treat which is really clutch because um a lot of other stuff in the deck 
has a retreat other than like Crobat. So being able to put it, put something up to pivot is really good. Um, but yeah, so it's good for two reasons. Uh, the attack and the poke power are both really good. Um, so starting off the power, healing breath. When you level X this Pokemon, uh, heal all damage from your Pokemon SP. So really sick uh, poke power. And it's like really good to Diago too. Like you play special metals and you have 120 HP. So you're pretty tanky, like not a lot of stuff is one-shotting you unless they're hitting you for like fire weakness. Um, and because of that, you get to make plays where you go like, attack with Dialga for a couple turns. Oh no, I have like 80 damage on this Dialga and now it's about to die. And I don't want to lose like three special medals. That's so much investment to just lose. Um, so what you can do, you play four warp energy, you attach a warp energy to the Dialga, um, or you play some switch outs as well, like a warp point and a switch. Uh, go into the Garchomp, level X, heal all that damage off. And because you have free retreat, you can just go back to the Dialga, which is... Uh, a better attacker, but not on all counts, um, because Garchomp does have an attack as well. So uh, Dragon Rush is the attack for three colorless. You discard two energy, and then you snipe 80 somewhere on your opponent's board. So that's really solid. Uh, kills sprites, kills stuff like Claydol. Uh, mainly just, like, you're killing stuff on their bench that, uh, like, they need. Like a Claydol. Like, if you kill a Pixie, that's okay, but usually you'd rather be trainer locking. Um, but killing their Claydol, like, for example, that's a, that's a really good investment of a trainer lock turn where you like break your trainer lock kill a claydol and then now all of a sudden yeah they're not getting trainer locked anymore but they're also not getting power draws uh so that's a, a super cool part about garchomp garchomp's a great card this will pick two uh yuxi so yuxi is pretty staple in 2010 uh it's got a power called setup setup when you bench yuxi it lets you draw up to seven uh so that's really good uh it's got 70 hp single treat weakness to psyching you can also psychic restore uh, so psychic restore for a single colorless does 20 um that can be really good just to get it off of your bench because it is kind of a liability sometimes like if you're playing against a gengar deck or against another garchomp deck um having a 70 hp pokemon on your bench with a power is just like kind of suspect so getting it back into the deck uh, can be really good so psychic restore is kind of neat for that uh so you still play one uxy level x uh uxy level x is super cool so it's got 90 hp single retreat um and then a weakness to psychic and it's got a power so the power is called trade-off uh, you can look at the top two cards of your deck and then put one in your hand and the other one on the bottom of your deck so really really solid uh, mid to late game consistency like you put it up you put an unknown q on it or like you warp energy it you're able to level exit and then put it to the bench and then all of a sudden that yuxi that you thought was kind of a wasted bench slot uh, now turns into a consistency pokemon which is really nice and zenblade is cool too zenblade for a dce does 60 and then you can't use zenblade using your next turn um so i mean it's okay, usually you want to be attacking with better things, but hitting for Psychic Weakness can be really cool. Uh, you don't play Lucario GL in this particular list, uh, so you're not able to like hit those easy one-shots on Gardevoir, but there are like a lot of tricky number stuff you can do, especially when Def only does 10. Um, a lot of times your opponent thinks, oh, you know, I'm only taking 10 or 20 from this Def, and it's not that bad. The Trainer Lock is really what's, what's hurting me here, but you can manipulate your numbers, so... Gardevoir has plus 30 to weakness. If you hit one def in and then a Crobat drop, uh, Zenblade is able to knock it out. So even just like that small amount of uh, chip damage makes Zenblade a, a potential threat for a lot of psychic weak decks. Okay, so you also play an Azelf. Uh, time Walk Azelf is really staple as well. So it's got 70 HP, single retreat, and a weakness to psychic. Uh, time Walk. When you bench Azelf, you can search your prizes for a Pokemon, put it in your hand, and then take a card from your hand and return it to your prizes. Um, and, you know, it, back in the day in tournaments, you would write down where your prizes are um, just so you know where they are. And, like, that's another kind of cool part about Azelf as well. But, yeah, just really staple just because you have so many, like, you only play a 2-2 of your level X lines. So if you prize, like, two Garchomp, that's really bad. And you can't really afford to not play with two Garchomp for a full game until you draw them off the prizes. You play one unknown Q as well. Uh, unknown Q is super cool. It's got a um, Poke Power called Quick. So it's got 30 HP and a free retreat. The free retreat is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so Quick says uh, if unknown Q is on your bench, you can activate Quick. So let's say you have an Azelf and you're active and you have a Q on your bench. You can go unknown Q, uh, attach it as a tool to your active Pokemon or, you know, wherever on the board. Um, and then that Pokemon has one less retreat. So Azelf has one retreat. And because of that, um, you can just retreat it for free. And that's really nice with an Uxie too, because you put the Uxie up, um, unknown Q it, level X in the active, and then you can just retreat it, uh, which is super cool. Um, 
But yeah, so Unknown Q is nice as well because your uh, Garchomp has fat retreat. Um, it's got two retreat, which is pretty hefty. And sometimes you like have to manually retreat it. Sometimes you don't hit your warp energy and you don't hit your switch outs. Um, and, you know, retreating it so it can chill on the bench for a turn while you find a Garchomp is usually the correct play. And quick sometimes lets you uh, move around like that. Still play an unknown G. Uh, unknown G has 50 HP, a single retreat, and then a weakness to psychic as well. So you play unknown G for guard. Uh, guard is similar to quick. Um, they both activate as tool cards. So um, when you attach unknown G to one of your Pokemon, um, it doesn't get hit by effects of attack. So that stops stuff like Gengar's uh, Shadow Room because it's an effective attack. Um, anything that has like a special condition as a as a like sidebar, it's like if this Pokemon's also affected by like special burn or poison or whatever, uh, Guard stops that. Um, but yeah, so. You also play one Bronzong G. Uh, Bronzong G is a really cool part of the deck. It's really important for sure. Uh, so it's got a 90 HP, a three retreat, which is like a really fat retreat. I mean, you play a lot of switch outs and stuff to get around that, but three retreat is definitely the fattest in the deck. A resistance to fire, which is pretty interesting because it's a metal type, um, especially when Dialga is like weak to fire. It's kind of an interesting resistance that they gave it. Um, and then a weakness to psychic, which it's really not weak to psychic at all. It's kind of a funky card. They just decided to do whatever they wanted with it. Um, so you don't really use the attack. Uh, you have the ability to use the attack if you need to, um, but you don't really use it. So for uh, metal and a colorless, it does 40. Uh, or metal and DCE does 40. If you have an energy gain, it's just two, but it does 40 and then it does 10 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counters uh, already on it. So, you know, mediocre, but can lead to some cool stuff. Uh, like you play metal energy. So knowing, knowing that you have psychic pulse in your uh, arsenary is like really good um, because let's say your opponent, you're, you're down to the last prize and your opponent has uh, a bench Pokemon that has like, that's three damage away from getting knocked out and you're out of Garchomp. So you don't have any more Garchomp. Um, so what you can do is Psychic Pulse with a Crobat drop um, and then do 20. And if you get double Crobat drop, you can drop uh, 30 damage on your opponent's active. So kind of kind of a cool thing uh, that lets you do really niche and usually can't uh, use that effectively in a game. But knowing your options to be like, if that's your only option to win a game, uh, Psychic Pulse, it's just good to know uh, because you do play this metal. So Galactic Switch is the power. And once during your turn, before you attack, uh, you may move an energy attached to one of your Pokemon SP to another one of your Pokemon, and then you put two damage counters on uh, Bronzong. So really good power, especially when you invest a lot of like special metals early. Being able to, you know, warp energy into a Garchomp, evolve, move an energy, just get a basic attach off. Not having to hit that DCE to Dragon Rush is uh, really solid. Uh, and it just like keeps you flowing, keeps you doing whatever you want. Uh, it lets you move around energy for like Zen Blade and stuff too. It just like keeps you, keeps you your energy fluid on your board. This would play a Crobat G. Uh, Crobat G is really solid. Uh, it has a Poke Power called Flash Bite. Uh, Flash Bite says when you bench Crobat, you can do 10 damage somewhere on your opponent's board. So that's super hot, um, especially when, uh, you know, you're hitting stuff for snipe 80s and for like 10 chips. And a lot of the times you're like 10 or 20 away from getting knocked out. And so being able to just go like Crobat, Poke Turn, Crobat again, just to hit those numbers that you need uh, helps like even out the, the numbers of the deck with a lot of the opposing Pokemon's HP. So you play a Dragonite FB as well. A Dragonite FB is a uh, Garchomp counter. So it's got two attack, 100 HP, three retreat, which is also very fat, um, resistance to fighting, and then a weakness to normal. Uh, so the attack that you usually use is called Mock Blow. Mock Blow for three um, does 20, but if your opponent's active is a Pokemon SP, it does 80 instead. Uh, so you kill a Garchomp uh, unless, well, even if they have a... Um, even if they have an extra belt, you kill them. So it's actually pretty pretty good. Uh, and, you know, it's just really nice because you have the Garchomps, and in a Garchomp mirror, a lot of the times, like, everybody knows that Garchomp kills Garchomp. They know that Earthquake and a Crobat kills the opposing Garchomp. So having options that aren't the Garchomp C that you're trying to evolve into the Garchomp C level X, uh, to kill a Garchomp just leaves that Garchomp open so it's not, uh, like, your opponent has to drag and rush it on the bench instead of just earthquaking it in the active for example and just having a mock blow uh, to be able to do that is good giant tails kind of trash uh, for four does 100 flip a coin of tails this attack does nothing i guess it's okay in niche situations but usually pretty bad attack so you play one tail code ambipom uh this is an interesting card in the deck as well so it's got 80 hp a single retreat um no resistance and a weakness to fighting so this is another garchomp counter uh, garchomp was such a good card in 2010 like the meta 
played around it so much. Like there was a, a ton of Garchomp in every SP deck that was out there. Like um, Luxchomp played Garchomp. Uh, Sableock played Garchomp. This tick play, deck plays Garchomp. Like there's just so much Garchomp. So having those counters so that you're consistent is is really nice. So uh, Ambipom for two snap attack, it does 60. Um, if your opponent has energy attached to their active Pokemon, this attack only does 20. But since Garchomp discards the energy, and that's like such an uncommon like requirement to be fulfilled like usually your opponent has energy on their active but with garchomp they always discard it um so if they go like energy gain dce which is the most common way to use garchomp um snap attack just kills it and then it's nice because you can snap attack for one energy uh too so you don't have to worry about finding that dce it's kind of a nice um garchomp counter the first attack uh tail code not really used that much but there are um uses for it for sure so tail code says um you may use this attack and then you move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. Uh, so, you know, not that great and kind of a waste of an attack, but there are situations where like, let's say your opponent has a Gardevoir in the active and they miss the DCE, and but they telepass you. They put in the active so they telepass you. you if you don't have like a really good answer to that, you can just put a, um, a Ambipalm up and then uh, tail code, move the Psychic, and then all of a sudden that Gardevoir that they thought they were going to attack with with the DC next turn, um, they don't have that option. So there are some cool stuff stuff for tail code, but most of the time you just use it for snap attack. Okay, so we're getting to some of the trainers. Uh, so four Power Spray. Power Spray is broken, broken, broken. A really cool card. So you can use this card on your opponent's turn. Uh, and Power Spray says, as soon as you have three Pokemon SP in play, uh, this card is live. So um, what it says is, if you have three Pokemon SP in, your, in play and your opponent uh, tries to activate a power, you may play this card. Um, power Spray says that power is not activated. So that's really, really good. Um, for one, uh, Uxie. Hitting Uxie, especially when your opponent has like two or three cards in their hand, they're like, oh, I really need to draw like four or five of this Uxie. When you power spray them, a lot of the times that means that that's the end of their turn um, because they really need that Uxie. And like knowing when to power spray is really interesting because there are some powers that you're like, I really can't let that happen. Um, and there are some that you don't really care about. Like Azelf is one of those really important powers that if your opponent Azelfs, you probably want to power spray that. Um, setup is another important one. There's a lot of kind of tricky ones in the mirror uh, or like versus Lux Chomp. Like you can shut off a bright look, uh, but sometimes you don't need to do that. Uh, so like being able to shut off a Bronzong too, like sometimes Bronzong is going to move an energy around so that they get the energy on a Garchomp so that they can do something to your board. And just like knowing what your opponent's trying to do is an interesting part of Power Spray because you have to like get in their head, think, what do I need to do this turn? And then you have to use your Power Spray's uh, effectively to stop that because if you power spray on the wrong power really like if i flash bite you and you're like oh power spray because i don't want you to flash bite me it could be a bait i could just not actually be wanting to, to flash bite but i could be scared of a power spray um so it's kind of a tricky part about the mirror that's really cool really really solid card uh you play four poke turn as well uh poke turn says take one of your pokemon sp and all cards attached and bring it back to your hand so really good card uh good at getting multiple crobat drops in a turn if you need like two crobat drops to kill something um another cool use is you can uh get bronzong back and use bronzong twice especially when you have so much energy on the board uh moving energy around twice in a turn like if you miss an attach but you still want to attack with a garchomp you can go bronzong sp turn bronzong again um it also let, lets you like be consistent with your Garchomp healing. You don't often poke a turn a Dialga because you have those special metals on there. It's like kind of a waste of your attachments. Uh, but yeah, picking up a, a Garchomp is really solid with it. And like a Dialga with a single metal, poke a turn is really good because you can just go like deafen, 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 deafen. And then you attach your energy somewhere else. And then as soon as your opponent like hits you for some damage, you can just pick up that energy gain single metal Dialga that's about to die. Um, and then put the one up with energy up or put a guard jump up. Like you have a lot of options when you, when you play poker turn, it's a really good card. Play three energy gain as well. Uh, energy gain is really, really good. It's a solid tool in Pokemon SP and it like is played in every SP deck. Uh, so it's a tool when you attach to one of your Pokemon SP, they pay, play, they pay one colorless less uh, to attack. So really good. It lets you deafen for free. Um, it lets you dragon rush for a DCE. Um, it lets you tail code for free. You can get that for free or snap attack for single and then mock blow. Like all of your valid attacks or like, okay, like uh, you can get the DCE on an Ambipom and that's fine. Or you could find three colorless energy for a Dragonite. But like being able to go energy gain, energy, 
Pokemon in the same turn, like you drop all of them in the same turn, just means that your opponent doesn't get to like see what you have in your pocket. Um, they don't get to see, oh, okay, he's dropping a Dragonite this turn. Um, I gotta be prepped for that next turn, right? Like when you drop it out of nowhere, your opponent has no way of like seeing it coming. So Energy Gain is really cool like that. Play two uh, SP Radar. Uh, SP Radar says, Take a card from your hand, uh, put it on top of your deck, and then search your deck for a Pokemon SP. So it's kind of like Bebe's, but it's a trainer, so it's really good. Uh, lets you find those level Xs um, in the Pokemon SP, and you played a, a ton of like tech SP Pokemon too, like Crobat and stuff, so being able to find those consistently is solid as well. You play one Pokemon communication. Um, this one's Japanese, so it says goods. I love the, <laughs> the Japanese ones saying goods. I think that's so cool. Uh, so yeah, Pokecom says uh, the same thing as SP Raider, but with a Pokemon. So you take a Pokemon from your hand, reveal it to your opponent, put it in your deck, and then search your deck for any Pokemon, uh, and then put it in your hand. So Pokecom is just another Pokemon search that keeps your, keeps your deck fluid and keeps you finding Pokemon. So you play an Expert Belt as well. Uh, Expert Belt is really cool because it gives you plus 20 HP and plus 20 damage, which is really good. Um, but then it makes you an EX. So you're worth two prizes. Uh, and that, usually you want that on a Dialga just because with um, special metals, it's like so tanky. And being able to deafen, um, if you do hit that like second energy uh, so that you can deafen, deafening for 30 is much more effective than deafening for 10. Uh, you pretty much get a quaking punch off at that point uh, with special metal. So you're taking less damage as well. And you're just like tanking so hard. And two energy is like not that hard to fulfill. Like you can afford to attach two energy uh, and then, you know, poke turn that all back. You use Bronzong, put it to another Dialga, poke turn, uh, attach the one that you picked up with an expert belt, and then all of a sudden you just have a fresh Dialga attacking again. So it's really easy to keep it streaming and like not really worry about um, getting it knocked out because you do play so much healing in the deck in poke turn and uh, guard jump. You play a Warp Point as well. Uh, Warp Point says when you play this card, uh, your opponent switches their active with one of their bench Pokemon. They do it first, and then you switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon. So that's really good for bringing up a Garchomp C. Um, like I was saying, you, you're deafening for a bunch of turns, and then you switch into a Garchomp heal, and then just go back to deafening. Uh, and then you keep that trainer lock. And like the more turns you keep the trainer lock, the stronger the trainer lock becomes because as you uh, deafen, they're going to be stacking trainers in their hand. So unless you hand disrupt them, um, they're just going to pop off. But being able to consistently lock while being able to heal off that damage is really good. Uh, so you play a switch for the same, same reason. Uh, it just kind of like keeps your board fluid. Um, but switching, like Dialga has two retreat and you can really never afford to like just manually bring it out. Um, switch is also good because uh, like getting a Dragonite out of the active, if you attack with it, it has three. So you can't really uh, afford to be just manually retreating it and <laughs> you don't even like attach through energy to it so that's just like not even an option and just like having switching options when you have uh, a lot of pokemon in the deck that just like have retreat costs is it just makes you consistent so we're gonna the supporters uh you play four uh cyrus conspiracy so cyrus conspiracy is a great card uh it says you can search your deck for a basic or supporter card a basic energy card and a trainer card that has team galactic's invention in its name so that gets any of these cards, the like um, SP Radar, Energy Gain, uh, Power Spray, uh, Poke Turn, all those like uh, Team Galactic tools, uh, you just search them. So it's really nice. And then it gives you a basic energy for turn. You only play one basic energy in the deck, which is a basic metal. And I'm not 100% sure about that in this list because it makes Cyrus Conspiracy like that less consistent. But alternatively, um, you don't really care because why attach a basic metal when you can be attaching a special metal and take 10 less? Um, so, you know, having that one out is nice. I, I kind of would like to see a second one in this list, but having one is fine, especially when you are, have like a better option in, in regular metal. Um, and being able to search a supporter card too, it, it just lets you chain them. So you can go like, I'm going to Cyrus turn one for a power spray and a basic energy and another Cyrus. And then, you know, if you have three Pokemon SP out, that's a big threat to your opponent. Um, not only because, you know... <sighs> If they activate a power, they might get power sprayed. But if they don't activate a power, it just means that you keep that power spray in your hand. So you can Team Galactic's Invention for like a second power spray if you have uh, the resources available for you to do that. And that's just like, that's so much to look at when you're playing against an SP deck. To, to see two power sprays go into your opponent's hand, that's like, oh, that's rough. Um, but yeah, it's just really good. It keeps you consistent. Finding an energy gain turn one for Defen is really good with that as well. It's just got a lot of niche uses depending on where you are in the game. You play three collector. 
um, three collector is really great because you do uh, always want to have as many Pokemon out as you can early game, especially to hit that uh, power spray. You need three Pokemon SP to power spray. So with a collector, even if you start something that's not a SP Pokemon, like let's say you start an Unknown or an Uxi or an Azelf, um, you can just collector. And then if you have a power spray in your hand, it's like valid. So being able to power spray during your opponent's first turn is very, very strong because usually it's on your first turn that you're dropping those setups. Um, and I mean, power spraying a clay doll, you have to wait till turn two, but setup turn one is a really, that happens all the time. So being able to have the out to power spray that like during their second turn is, is super good. Quick to Bebe Search as well. Uh, Bebe Search says, oh, I didn't even say what Collector does. So Collector just searches your deck for three basic Pokemon. And then that, that's all it does. Uh, so put them in here. So Bebe Search, when you um, play this card, it's a support card, take a card from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, and then search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Um, so just, again, really good consistency. Let's you hit those turn two level X's so that you can get time crystal off. Uh, hitting an early time crystal can be detrimental to your opponent too, especially if they're paying like, keystone seal uh, spear tomb like that's a big it slows you down a lot and when you're able to just say ah, i'm just going to keep using my energy gains and my power sprays that's a a really good uh, effect of that card for sure to play one um pont pont is great because uh it's your shuffle draw you only play two shuffle draw cards in the deck uh one of them is pont it's just a good consistency supporter and you know you usually want to be searching stuff which is why you do play the four cyrus three collector two babies but um pont shuffle your hand in and draw six is just like pretty good and sometimes you have a hand where you're like i just have like too many things in my hand that i don't want and i just want a fresh hand uh, and pont just lets you do that which is very nice let's so also play judge judge is the second uh shuffle back that you have so judge says both players shuffle their hands into their deck and then they draw four cards so it's good hand disruption as well like if you're playing sp mirror and your opponent's been like stacking power sprays having an option to be able to shut that off is really good um and yeah just like kind of staple in the format a lot of decks played one judge just because that was the only hand disruption and with the amount of like just search in this format that like you put stuff in your hand all the time being able to disrupt your opponent's hand is is really strong so you play one Aaron's collection as well. Uh, Aaron's collection says uh, search your discard pile for two in any combination of Pokemon SP and basic energy cards and then put show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. Um, so I mean you can really only get the one uh, basic metal with it uh, and then it's Pokemon recovery but mainly it's just Pokemon recovery right like you only play the 2-2 line of the SP Pokemon and you often want to be attacking with these Pokemon because these are your best attackers so right you have like one two three four five prizes worth with an expert belt you still need more pokemon to complete a game uh so aaron's collection kind of just lets you take that like dialga and dialga g level x from your discard and just put them back in your hand which is super clutch okay so we're gonna get into the energy cards now um so the deck plays four special metal a uh, special metal is like probably one of the best cards in the deck really really good card um Special Metal says, if you have Special Metal attached to uh, one of your Metal Pokemon, uh, your opponent's attacks do 10 less damage to that Pokemon. So uh, they stack as well. So if you have like three on a Garchomp or three on a Dialga, every turn you're taking 30 less damage, which is like so, so bad. Like if you're minus 30-ing to your opponent, like doing 30 less damage, that means a Gardevoir is doing like 30 damage to you and how they're actually doing 10 because they're psychic resistant so that's really cool you're getting your powers locked <laughs> and taking 10 so special metal especially when you stack them that's why it's like so important to keep your ener energy on is you stack them on a dialga and then your opponent's like okay well i have to chip at this and take it take it out because i can't one shot it and you're like okay well i have like 80 damage on me switch heal now i'm back to attacking with this tank of a dialga that it has you have to hit 150 base because it has three on it. Uh, and no deck can really do that unless you're playing a fire type. So special metal is great. This is my four warp energy. Um, this is a part about this list that I really like. Um, the, the list that top 16 worlds um, only played three. And I think four is just really consistent. Not only because it's a colorless cost for the Garchomp, um, but also because finding a warp the more consistent your warp is, the more consistent your healing is. And the issue is having your Dialga die with special metals on it. That's like what can drown a game for you is if you have a special Dialga with like two or three special metals on it and it just like dies, that's not the strategy of your deck. The strategy of your deck is to stack them on and then keep it healing and poke turn and poke turn your Garchomp and then warp energy and do it again. Um, so just warp energy keeps you consistent and switching that out uh, and, and healing there, which is really good. It's also really good because you have some fat retreat Pokemon too. Like 
Um, getting a Bronzong out of the active if you start it, or a Dialg out of the active if you start it can be can be rough, but Warp just keeps you fluid. You play four DCE as well. Um, every deck that plays Garchomp plays four DCE because it lets you go DCE, Energy Gain, uh, Dragon Rush. And Dragon Rush is a great attack, uh, but you also play it, it lets you do second strike on turn two if you don't have an Energy Gain, which is really cool too, um, or remove Lost. So there's a lot of attacks in the deck that four DC lets you do. DC lets you also Zen Blade and Mock Blow. So there's just like a ton of stuff that it's it's really useful for. And honestly, probably the best card Pokemon's ever printed. Two energy for one is uh, pretty insane, really good. And then you do play that one special or one regular metal just for Cyrus, just so you can have that uh, search out if you need it. And you're just like more consistent that way. Not playing any basic energy and playing Cyrus just doesn't really. Um, so yeah, this has been uh, Dialga Chomp. Uh, if you have any questions about the deck, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to, to get to them. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.